If you're looking for an easy, make ahead, big batch cocktail recipe, then today's video is for you. We are making a dark berry red sangria that is perfect for a crowd. So sangria is a drink that dates back to the Middle Ages in Spain and Portugal. And while there's lots of different recipes and lots of different ways to make sangria, it basically boils down to three key ingredients. The wine you use, the fruits you use, and the type of sugar. And by mixing up those combinations, you can make an infinite number of sangrias. So you can make it more summery by using summer fruits and maybe some lighter wines. If you're looking for a white wine sangria, I made a super delicious mango peach one. So look for that. Actually, maybe I'll link that here for you. Or you can make a wintry one by adding some spices and maybe some darker kind of winter fruits, things like pomegranate. Well, I'm curious, are you a fan of sangria? And if you are, let me know in the comments below. Are you more a red sangria fan or a white sangria fan? I don't think there's any wrong answer. I'm just curious to see what your preference is. Okay, let's talk about what kind of wine to use when you're making a sangria. I wouldn't necessarily use your best bottle of wine because we are mixing it with other things. So save that best bottle of wine for a special occasion or when you're able to drink it on its own. I also wouldn't use the cheapest bottle of wine because you're just not sure what kind of sangria you're going to get from that. So instead, my rule of thumb is to use like a mid-range wine and use one that you like drinking on its own. Now, what type of red wine are we using in the sangria? You can use basically any type, but the Spanish wines like Tempranillo and Roja make delicious sangria, obviously, but also Merlot makes a nice sangria, Pinot Noir, and in this case today, we're going to be using a Cabernet Sauvignon because, well, because I like Cabernet Sauvignon and because that's what I had on hand and because it makes a really delicious sangria. The next ingredient we're gonna take a look at is the fruit. So what kind of fruit do you add to your sangria? So one of the ways I decide what kind of fruit to add, because you can add basically anything, is to take a look at the label, because sometimes the label will have the tasting notes, especially if it's a wine that you haven't tried before and you're just um, picking up a wine to try specifically for the sangria, you may not have tasted it. So the label will tell you kind of the flavor profile, um, and if that doesn't do it for you, you can always go online. Um, there's lots of people who will review different wines and will tell you kind of like the fruit flavors that come out in the wine. I mean, this fruit, I know we always see those pictures where the citrus, you know, is left in like big chunks like this, but I like to cut it into quarters only because when it pours into the glass, it's easier. And then somebody doesn't have to navigate drinking around these big, um, rings of oranges. I'm going to add the fruit. I'm going to start adding the fruit into the bottom of this pitcher. And the wine that I'm using, the Cabernet Sauvignon that I'm using here, has um, more of a dark berry flavor. And it's got kind of like a smoky oakiness to it. So what I'm going to do is add to it some citrus, so some oranges and some blackberries because that is a tasting note for sure and i also am going to add some raspberries some blueberries and then like you see me here chopping up some apple so with the fruit like i said we're going to add uh blackberries but also uh i didn't have enough blackberries so in the freezer, I had the frozen blackberries. So I kind of like to add a mix of frozen and fresh. Whoops, they're going all over the place. So here we've got the raspberries and the blueberries. Um, we're gonna add that all to the bottom. And then once I have this in the pitcher, that's when I like to add the sugar. So we're gonna add a quarter cup of white sugar to the fruit. Oh my gosh, I'm making a mess quarter cup of white sugar and we're going to give that a quick stir and then at this point too you can use a muddler or you can use your wooden spoon and just kind of press the fruit a little bit we just want some of that juice to come out not too much not overly because we don't want 
like mushed up bits to come out in the sangria. So, here we go. That's all set to go. I'm just gonna go get a towel now. Okay, now my hands are clean. We've got the fruit in here. Oh, one blueberry trying to escape. Got the fruit in here. We're gonna add to that the wine, which it's normally a full bottle of wine, but I already took a glass out of this. That's okay, we won't tell anybody. But a full bottle of whatever red wine you're choosing. And I like to keep the ingredients chilled. So I don't know why that is, but I feel like the sangria always comes out better when I start with chilled ingredients. Um, maybe that's because the flavors in the red wine are kind of mellower when they're cold. I don't know, but I like to start with refrigerated cold wine. And then we're gonna add to that a half a cup of brandy which lends a really nice orange flavor. And to amp up the orange flavor, we've got a cup of orange juice. Add that in there. Oh my gosh, this smells amazing. And citrusy, yum. We're gonna give that a stir. I mentioned that one of the reasons why I like making uh, sangria is that because you can make it ahead, and the nice thing about this is that once you've got these ingredients all together, all you have to do is pop it in the fridge, a minimum of two hours, but you could go up to 24 hours. So sometimes if I'm doing party prep, I'll do the mixture and I'll stick it in the fridge overnight. And then that gives the chance for the fruit and the flavors to all like kind of mellow together. So we're gonna pop this in the fridge. Okay, so with the magic of YouTube, Let's assume this has chilled for that minimum of two hours. And so just before you are ready to serve, I like to add um, about a cup and a half, maybe two cups of sparkling water to the sangria. I think just to, this, this just kind of helps to lighten up the flavors a little bit and it creates a really yummy summery drink. So we're gonna give that a stir. And then we pour. So when pouring, sometimes it's hard to kind of get all the fruit in there and you want to make sure everyone's getting some of that fruit because the fruit will be really tasty, like after being in the sugar and the wine and the brandy. So I try to make sure that we scoop some fruit into the glasses as well. So I'm gonna do the second one and that fruit just doesn't want to come down. Another scoop here to this glass. And if you want, it's completely optional, but if you want, you can add to it a couple sprigs of mint. And there we have ourselves this yummy red dark berry sangria that is perfect for a crowd and it's easy enough to make ahead. Cheers, I wish you all happy hosting and I wish all your hours are happy ones. Cheers again. Mm. Oh, that's so good. Oh my God, that's awesome.